Well, welcome everyone. Uh, so it's a pleasure to uh, have Ingrid uh, Membrillo Solis. Uh, she's a research uh, fellow at the University of Southampton, and she will talk about heat invariance of the hot star blast operator on Riemannian orbitals. So, thank you. Okay, and um, thank you, Fernando, for the invitation. It's my pleasure to um, participate in this uh, seminar. So I'm going to talk about a joint work with five wonderful collaborators, um, Katie, Katie Gittins, uh, Caroline Gordon, Magda Khalil, uh, Mary Sandoval, and Elizabeth Stanhope. Um, okay, so, um, so let me start with some, uh, talk about the motivations for this work. Um, so smooth orbifolds are in some sense a generalization of um, smooth manifolds. So which locally look like quotients of Rn by actions of finite groups. And uh, as in the case of smooth manifolds, a smooth orbital can be given a Riemannian structure, which in the end will allow us to use tools from spectral geometry, including for instance, the Laplace operator and its spectrum to study geometric and topological properties of this Riemannian orbifold. Uh, so we can get uh, several spectral data, which is, uh, for instance, the spectrum of the Hodge Laplacian on P forms, which I denoted uh, in this way. And uh, so, so from this, uh, there are several questions in the uh, in the area of spectral geometry regarding uh, the, the orbifolds. Uh, the, mm. So the first question uh, has to do with uh, how much we can use, or, or, or if it is possible that the spectral data detects orbifold sing singularity. So in other words, we would like to know if, uh, if um, the uh, manifold can be uh, have the same spectrum as a, as, as a, to a singular orbifold or not, if it is possible that it happens. And the second question is also to know how much information is encoded in the spectrum of the Hodge Laplacian um and regarding the singularities uh, of the orbital so the question in in particular is can this spectrum uh with uh, can detect uh, this is, can this spectrum detect the orbital singularities so that we can distinguish between two uh, orbitals with different types of singularities so these are the two kind of motivating questions to uh, study um to make this study uh, so um, these are then uh, along these lines, we, we will have our, the goals of, of this talk, which are the following. First, I'm going to uh, try to focus mainly in the positive results, which uh, basically I will try to show the, um, give the, some details about this, this theorem uh, that we proved. Um, so this theorem says that uh, the zero and the one spectra uh, together detect the presence of any primary singular strata of codimension at most three. And in particular, this result says that uh, the zero and one spectra together can distinguish any closed D Riemannian or before from uh, closed D dimensional Riemannian, um, uh, man, uh, well, or before from manifold. They, they cannot be isospectral. So, um, so that means that, um, yeah, so it's, it's a nice result for uh, orbifolds in low dimension. And also, I, at the end of the talk, I will uh, give an example of construction of orbifolds, two orbifolds with different uh, isotropy types, but whose uh, spectrum are the same. All right. Uh, so then, uh, let's. I'm going to start then with the background on orbifolds. So this part will be very basic. But if, in, in any case, if you have any questions, just just let me know. And after that, I will jump to the part of the, um, the spectrum, uh, spectral geometry of these orbitals. Okay, so uh, let's just start saying that a, um, uh, but uh, let's just start with a second countable Hauser space X. So for a connected open subset U uh, of X, so an orbital chart over U is just a triple where uh, U tilde is a connected open subset of, of RD. GU is a finite group acting effectively on U tilde by diffeomorphisms. And the map pi uh, from U tilde to U will induce homeomorphism between U and the quotient of U tilde by the action of the finite group. Um, an embedding between orbital charts is just an embedding between the, the open sets U tilde and, and B. 
such that this diagram commutes. So here we have uh, the, the quotient maps, and here we have the, the, the smooth embedding, and this is just an intuition. Um, <clears throat> two orbital charts uh, on X are, we say that they are compatible if for each point in the, in the intersection of U uh, and B, there exists a, a third orbital chart so that uh, about X, so that we have embeddings from this third chart in this the, the previous two uh, orbital charts. Uh, and with all these ingredients, then uh, we can give the definition of a d-dimensional orbifold. So uh, the d-dimensional orbifold is a second countable Hausdorff space X together with a collection of compatible charts where the images of the maps by U will form an open cover of X. Okay, now um, given a local chart about a point X and a lift of this point, uh, say X tilde in U tilde, then we can define the isotropy group of the point X in the, in, in, in the orbital as the group of uh, elements in GU, the local group, such that uh, these elements will fix uh, the, the, uh, the, the lift of the point X. Um, and uh, okay, and then we will say that a point in X is singular if the isotropy group of X is not the trivial group, and otherwise this, this point will be called uh, regular. Okay, and well, we can have a distinction between orbifolds saying that, uh, well, uh, we have good orbifolds and bad orbifolds. And so a good orbifold is, or an orbifold is said to be good if we can obtain this orbifold as the quotient space of a manifold by the action of, of a discrete group acting properly with uh, finite isotropies, finite isotropies. Otherwise, we, the, we will call the orbifold bad. So let's some, give some examples of these orbifolds of all these constructions. So uh, first of all, I just have to say, of course, that any manifold is, is trivially an orbifold. So it's a, an orbifold without singularities. And in this case, well, obviously the local charts are given by, by the, the orbifold charts are given by the, the local charts of the manifold and the local groups will be always the trivial groups. Uh, and well, we also can have more interesting examples. And for instance, in dimension two, um, in dimension two in particular, we have only three types of singularities. We can have cone points, mirror reflectors, and dihedral points. Um, so here I'm just, uh, I will show uh, some three examples of uh, uh, orbifolds in dimension two having this kind of um, singularities. Uh, so here we, we start with the teardrop. So you can see why it's called teardrop. So it looks like, it, well, it looks like a sphere, but with one singularity. And, um, and then we have uh, here um, that, so this point X is our singular point. And we can model, for instance, we can give a, car, a, a local chart around this uh, open set U uh, by, so we can take an open disk U tilde and now we can let a, a group acting by rotations. And, and in this case, I'm just given the particular example where we take the, the local group to be just C2 uh, acting by rotation. And of course, uh, all the points apart from the center uh, are um, the, the group will act uh, freely. And the only point fixed by, the, by this, uh, the elements of the group is just the center. So the isotropy, the isotropy group of X, so in this case, the lift of this will be X tilde, and this, is, this point is fixed by the whole group. And this is an example of a bad orbifold. So we cannot get this teardrop as a quotient of a manifold by any discrete group. Okay, so another example uh, is the square. So square can also be thought of as a manifold with corners, but also we can think of it as, a, as an orbifold. And if we think about uh, this a, a square as an orbifold, then, okay, let, let's take, for instance, as an example uh, of points um, of charts, we, we can take, for instance, U to be this open, open setting here in, in the square, 
And then again, we can take a, a chart around uh, uh, for this open set U to be an open disk. And uh, we can take the, the local group will be uh, C2 cross C2, and which is generated by these two reflections, so row one and row two. And what we can see is that the center of the open disk is fixed by these two reflections. And, and this center indeed is a lift for this uh, the corner point in the square. And a lift for Y will be any of these two points in, in, in the circle. And these two points indeed are fixed by the rotation, uh, sorry, by, by the reflection row two. So in this case, the isotropy group of Y will be just uh, uh, C2. Oh, because, well, we can choose whatever of these two lifts and this will be uh, the same group indeed. Um, so they both are fixed by, by, by C2. And, uh, and, and for the case of, of set, the isotropy group is just the whole group, uh, C2 cross C2. And this is an example of a Gusdorf before. And later at the end of the talk, we will see how to get this as a portion of a manifold by, by a discrete group. Uh, and finally, I um, just want to show an example of an orbifold which can be either good or bad, depending on how we have the local groups. So here we have the spindle or the football. And the spindle is, is just basically, we, we is kind of like a teardrop but with another singularity and, and top in the, at the bottom. And again, we can uh, locally uh, describe this uh, by by, the, by U tilde, so uh, open disks, uh, quotient by the action of some rotation of two pi over some uh, n. And in this case, in this particular case, I'm just taking the local groups to, to be um, C2 and C3. And, and this orbifold will be good if and only if these two groups are isomorphic. So in this case, for instance, I'm taking the example of a spindle, which is a bad orbifold. And for instance, if we take this to be uh, isomorphic, so then we can think of this spindle to be just the, the quotient space of the action of a finite group on the, on the sphere, on the two sphere. All right, so uh, now that we can, we, we saw some examples of, of orbifolds, let me, let me uh, say uh, how we can get a Riemannian orbifold. So a uh, Riemannian structure on an orbifold is just defined by giving the local cover U tilde of each orbifold chart at UU invariant Riemannian metric, so that the maps lambda uh, bar are isometry. So these maps appeared in the definition of embeddings, which also appear in the definition of compat compatibility. And, uh, <clears throat> and we said that a Riemannian orbifold is a, an orbifold with a, a Riemannian structure. Um, well, okay, so now uh, a chart about X will define a smooth action of GU on, on U tilde. And now if we fix a lift X tilde in U tilde, a uh, lift of X, then um, any element, uh, an element of gamma will define an invertible uh, linear map uh, in, the, in the tangent space at the point X tilde in the, the at U, in U tilde, um, which gives an injective linear representation of the isotropy group of X, which is unique up to conjugacy. And indeed, it can be proved that this linear representation is conjugate to an orthogonal representation. So with that, we can think of the isotropy group as a subgroup of ON, yeah, or in this case, OD. Uh, so then this, this allows us to give a a definition which will be very useful for later for our computations. So the isotropy type of X is the conjugacy class of the isotropy group of X in OD. And again, this definition is independent of both the uh, choice of lift of X and the chart. All right, so now um, we this definition of isotropy types will give rise to an equivalent relation in, in, in the orbifold, and which will partition the orbifold into submanifolds. And these, uh, the elements of well, th this partition are called the O strata of the, of the orbifold. So this is, will be the, is it, indeed, this is a smooth stratification of the orbifold. And, um, 
And then, well, we, we given a, a, an O stratum, uh, we can define the, the isomax of the stratum to be the set of all elements in the, in the isotropy group of N, such that N is open in the fixed point set of G. So this will be like a, something that seems a bit arbitrary, but we will use it later in, in, uh, in our results. Um, then an O stratum N is singular if uh, iso N is non-trivial and it is primary if isomax is non-empty. And just let me show briefly just an example. Maybe I'm not going to stop that much in this stratification, but just to, to show what these isomax and uh, isotropy groups are. So, um, so in this case, we have uh, four, four uh, strata. So we have uh, the uh, W in this case is the set is the set of all regular points, so the manifold points, say, and x, y, and z are the, the singular points. And so, what are the isotropy groups in this case? So we can think of this, uh, for instance, in the case of x. Again, it's kind of like a cone point, and this will be uh, generated in this case by a rotation. Well, here in this case, I'm taking this the group generated by by uh, the, the composition of these two matrices. So again, we can think of um, these two elements in O2, and this group will be uh, set mod three. Uh, uh, so we will we, we'll generate uh, this, this this element uh, will generate a, 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 a group isomorphic to set mod three, um, and and in this case, isomax will be uh, all the all the apart from the identity. Uh, as you can see, indeed, for all the stratum, uh, all the strata, uh, the uh, this isomax won't contain the, the the identity element because, in this case, the the identity element will fix the whole the whole orbifold, and therefore, all the stratum in this case will will not be open in 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 the the whole uh, set fixed by the identity. But uh, for the other stratum, for instance, uh, we have uh, that, for instance, in this case, this is a dihedral point generated by these two elements. This is the dihedral group of order six. And, uh, and in this case, um, the isomax would be only generated by, uh, by this composition and, and the, the, the inverse. And for, uh, for uh, the stratum set, we have um, that this is uh, the isotropy group is just C2. And so the isomax will be just a non-trivial uh, element in C2. Okay, uh, now uh, let me jump to uh, the part of uh, heat invariance, so spectral geometry uh, for, uh, for functions on manifolds. So again, Remember that we can think of a manifold as an orbifold. So this is kind of like a, uh, the very simple cases for studying the spectral geometry of orbifolds, so let's say for, for manifolds. And this, in this case, we, we want to say things about the functions, um, the functions on these manifolds. Uh, given a, a, um, a compact smooth Riemannian manifold of dimension D, it is well known so that the Laplace Beltrami operator has a discrete spectrum with finite multiplicities. And, and uh, the normalized eigenfunctions are smooth and form an orthonormal basis of the space L2 of the manifold. And the uh, fundamental solution uh, of the heat equation uh, or heat kernel has this, this, this form. So this is kind of like a very standard result that been studied for, for a long, long time. And so it's kind of uh, well known. And um, the, now the, the trace of, of the heat kernel of functions on M or, or simply the heat trace has an asympt asymptotic expansion of the following form as T tends to, to zero. So here we have, uh, this is uh, the definition of, we have the trace, which is this part. And, uh, and then we have just a series on, uh, on powers of, of T. And, um, and then here, these coefficients are integrals over M and these are the so-called heat invariants. Um, so this is just uh, for, for the case of uh, function on manifolds. 
But now, uh, now if we want to study uh, also what happened with the um, heat invariance for the uh, Laplace operator, uh, we can think of it not just acting on functions, but now acting on, on P forms. And then in that case, we, we have to consider the Hodge Laplace operator acting on P forms. And if we consider now uh, this operator, then uh, Gaffney in 1958 showed that there is a unique fundamental solution of the heat equation. And in this case, for instance, uh, uh, this, um, this, this, this part, when we fix T, this becomes a, 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 double, a double P form. So a double P form will be in this case, again, is similar to a P form, it's just the section of a, of an, in this case, or uh, of a bundle. Um, and, um, and well, and in this case, we have, a, 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 again, an asymptotic expansion, and, uh, and we have, obviously, coefficients for each uh, value of p. And in this case, if we take uh, p to be 0, these have to coincide with the uh, laplace beltrami operator, with the coefficients of in the expansion using the Lapla laplace beltrami operator. All right, so now uh, just I want to um, show probably some, uh, you know, we, we only said that there are some uh, uh, a, the, the heat invariants, but now uh, we, we would like to know how they look like. Uh, so here I'm just showing the first three heat invariants for uh, zero forms and for one forms. And uh, as you can see, uh, all these heat invariants involve a geometric uh, terms, so geometric data, so the the uh, the heat invariance encode geometric properties of the of the um, of the manifold. So, for instance, in the case when p is equal to zero, when we have functions, um, uh, we have that the first uh, heat invariant is just the volume of the manifold, and for one forms, uh, it's just uh, the volume times the dimension of the manifold. So it's just uh, a zero zero times times d, and similarly, for instance, for a one zero, so the second heat invariant now involves the integral of the scalar curvature, and uh, and and for uh, one forms, it's again the same the same expression times uh, d minus six. Now for the third invariant, then things become a little bit more complicated. So the expression is not as simple as the previous two. Uh, heat invariants. So now, for instance, we have terms like the norm of the Ricci tensor, the norm of the curvature tensor, and things will will be a little bit more complicated. As you can imagine, as we grow well, we, in in the the heat invariant, uh, the uh, when when J increases, then the these expressions become more and more complicated. But yeah, but this is I want to, to just to give you an idea of of how this expression look like. And also because in the end, uh, we will use this, this heat invariance to get our result, the, the invariance for um, zero and one forms for the first, the, for the first terms. Okay, so uh, now, uh, well, then everything was just uh, developed for the case of, of manifolds or trivial manifolds. Uh, but then uh, in 1995, uh, Busikovic, um, Show that uh, um, the Hodge Laplacian operator of the of an orbifold has a discrete spectrum as well, and with each eigenvalue having finite multiplicity, and the normalized eigenfunctions are c uh, c infinity and form an orthonormal basis of the L two space of of the orbifold. And and Xiang uh, showed a special case for the. Uh, for closed Riemannian uh, orbifolds with a strata of co-dimension at least two and p equals to zero. So this, this, this result was proved first and the result of Busikovic, but this is only for the case of, uh, of, of uh, studying the Laplace operator acting on functions and Busikovic generalized for, for whatever uh, p form. Um, all right, so now uh, we have this definition. We said that two orbifolds E, uh, O, and O prime are P isospectral if the spectrum of uh, the P spectrum of these two orbifolds uh, coincides. All right, so now uh, let me present maybe some results that people have done for the case of, of zero forms 
for functions on orbifolds, like in heat kernel methods to study the, um, uh, the spectrum of the um, Laplace operator acting on functions on orbifolds. Uh, so in this case, again, uh, we said that the function is a heat kernel if it satisfies these three, these three conditions. So K will be continuous and C1 in the first variable and C2 in the second variable. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> and in here, well, this most satisfy well the, this, uh, the, the heat equation, um, <clears throat> where here the, this is the Laplace Beltrami operator. Uh, uh, with respect to the second variable, and then this uh, function, when 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 we fix the second variable, uh, will tend to the a delta function as t tends to zero. And, and a proposition from Xiang in 1990 is that if the heat kernel exists, then again it will be a, its solution will be unique and is given by by this expression. Uh, well, um, from, from these results, indeed, uh, Dritten, Gordon, Greenwald, and Webb in 2008 developed, uh, we ob they obtained uh, an asymptotic expansion for, for the, the trace of the heat kernels for, for functions on orbifolds. And indeed, this is what allowed them to use, uh, to get this, this result. Indeed, uh, this is the first result regarding uh, this, this, this question that I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, if it is possible to distinguish orbifolds from manifolds using the spectrum. So this theorem says that, well, we call it uh, the parity theorem and you will see why. So if O is even dimensional and if there exists an all dimensional primary uh, uh, singular O stratum N, then O cannot be, the orbifold cannot be zero is spectral to a Riemannian manifold. So that means that uh, whenever, uh, um, similarly, if we have the, uh, an orbifold of odd dimension, and if this has uh, a an, an stratum of even dimension. So um, in this case, for instance, whenever we have um, a, a stratum of odd co-dimension, this theorem says that a manifold, an orbifold cannot be zero is spectral to, um, to um, uh, an orbifold. So that, that is a um, very interesting result that so solved many cases, but still obviously this doesn't say anything for the case when we have even dimensional manifolds with even dimensional uh, stratum or odd dimensional manifolds with, oh, sorry, even dimensional orbifold with even dimensional uh, uh, stratum and all dimensional orbifolds with all dimensional uh, stratum, singular stratum. Uh, but even though they didn't get a, a nice, uh, a nicer or a, a result, a complete result, as in as the parity theorem, um, they also gave some answers uh, regarding that what happens when we have, for instance, a, a two-dimensional orbifold with zero-dimensional uh, uh, singularities. So for instance, in this case, if the orbifold is locally orientable, it's two-dimensional with uh, K points of, of, um, of different orders, and uh, then the spectral invariant C, which is just given as the sum of this, the, the orders, well, this is some, some expression uh, as a function of the orders, and uh, th this is just the uh, Euler characteristic of the orbifold, then this will be a complete topological invariant for the class of close locally orientable orbifolds and C distinguish them from smooth surfaces with Euler characteristic bigger than or equal to zero. So somehow this is also nice result because it tells us that the, um, <clears throat> that this, this, uh, can, can, we can hear the, uh, these singularities uh, for some cases which are not covered by the parity theorem. Um, then, uh, well, in, in other cases, for instance, for hyperbolic oriented closest to dimensional orbifolds, uh, Dryden and Strokmeyer Stro in 2009, uh, I think they didn't use exactly heat kernel methods, but they were able to show that, um, for instance, uh, the two orbifolds, a uh, two dimensional orbifolds are zero isospectral if and only if both have same length spectra. So the length spectra, uh, is just the, the a sequence of the uh, lengths of the closed geodesic, geodesics in the um, in the orbifold, 
and if they also have the same number of, of cone points of every order. So again, this is some, somehow related to the second question that I, I mentioned at the beginning. So try to, to see if uh, we can uh, uh, kind of like uh, the, the spectrum distinguishes uh, between orbifolds of different singularities. But it's still, well, we have results, but still these things are not, uh, there, there are several uh, problems which is still are, ha haven't been uh, uh, given an answer. So in this regard, um, so we, we wanted to develop heat kernel methods uh, in, in this, uh, with this idea of trying to see if, for instance, studying not just uh, heat, uh, the, the Laplace operator acting on, on forms, but now acting on p-forms, we could get a method in which we can distinguish or we can hear, as we said in, in, well, in spectral geometry, we can hear the singularities of an orbital which has a, 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 a stratum of even dimension. Uh, so for that, uh, we, this is uh, the, the theorem. So we have uh, the heat trace has an asymptotic expansion as t tends to zero and, and is given by this expression. So here uh, I will go slow by to explain these terms. So here, for instance, we have uh, this term consists, well, well, this expression consists of two terms. So the first term is corresponds to all the regular points, so say all the manifold points. And the second uh, uh, part or the second factor in, in this expression uh, <clears throat> consists of all the uh, orbifold points or singular points. And so these are the contributions. We, we split the contributions into the manifold uh, uh, contribution of manifold points and orbifold points. And uh, um, now in this case, uh, if we now consider I, the, the first term, so this expression, this, this expression for the, the asymptotic expansion indeed coincide with the, uh, um, the asymptotic, uh, the expression for the asymptotic expansion of the heat trace in the case of manifolds. So we have here and here, for instance, these coefficients are the corresponding heat invariance defined as for manifolds. So, so somehow we, we recover this in this case, the, what is already said about for, for manifolds. Uh, now in the, the, the second uh, factor uh, in, in, in this uh, expansion is uh, correspond to orbital points here as SO is just the set of all singular strata of the orbifold. And this is just the, uh, the order, uh, ISO n with bars, is just the order of the isotropy type of the stratum n. And now uh, let me explain what the, the numerator in this expression is. So now if we fix uh, n in the uh, stratum, in the set of all the stratum of the orbifold, then uh, we will have this expression uh, for, for this stratum, where here we have then the dimension of the, of the uh, stratum divided by two. And we have here, it's just an integral of some, some uh, functions. And here, uh, these functions, V, J, P, um, are given by this expression. And here you will see that um, we have the isomax appearing. So again, this is, um, well, in this case, n tilde, we, we, we have to think that this is kind of a local expression. So every, every uh, stratification of an orbital will give rise to a local stratifications in the local charts. So uh, then we, we have here that um, for, we have then expression for isomax and for the local charts, um, as, as, uh, similarly as, as we did it before. And, and this is the determinant of the identity minus, uh, this is the uh, matrix representation of the action of G, uh, this G, on the, um, uh, 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 the orthogonal complement of the tangent space of the, uh, of the uh, um, at X of the uh, stratum N in U, in U tilde, yeah. So, uh, and, and this one, uh, this part is just, again, functions which are polynomials that depend only on the germ of the Riemannian metric and the isotropy action. 
Uh, so uh, then we, we have here, um, is, is there any question, by the way? I haven't stopped to ask if there is any question. No? All right, so um, um, now um, we, we have um, um, kind of um, a whole expression. So if we now we can still squeeze our, um, our uh, asymptotic expansion and to have this form. So in this case, as you can see now, we can get an expression in which we have half hours appearing in the expansion. So from this, it's kind of more or less clear or we have, we give, it gives us an idea of why this theoretic, the, the parity theorem holds. And this is because, um, so here we have, again, um, uh, half terms in, in, in the, and powers, but in if we go back to the expression of the uh, uh, heat invariance for manifolds, we don't have these uh, uh, half terms appearing, so we only have uh, integer powers of t, and and so that means that, for instance, in the case of manifolds, depending on the um, the dimension of the of the, so we have four t times t to the minus d over two. So in this case, this means that. Depending on the dimension of the of the manifold, so if we forget about for a moment that this is just for orbifold, we think of it as a as a manifold. Then in this case, we just have uh, that depending on the dimension, uh, we only will get either integer powers or half powers, but not a mix of both. Uh, however, in the case of the uh, in, in this case for with with uh, orbifold, uh, when we consider orbifold singularities, for instance we might have um, contributions, well, powers which are integers and half at the same time. So that means that, uh, again, in, in that case, when we have indeed a odd co-dimension, uh, um, stratum or strata of odd co-dimension, then these half powers and integer powers will appear, which do not happen in the case of the manifolds. So that's why in this case, uh, it, it would follow that then it, it, it's possible to detect al as long as these uh, coefficients do not vanish. And indeed, it is proved that they, in this case, they, they do not vanish. And so that, that's why um, it follows that um, um, orbifolds, in those cases, uh, an orbifold cannot be isospectral to a, to, um, uh, a manifold. Okay, so now um, let me then um, say uh, things about the applications, our, our own results. Uh, so again, I'm just going to uh, recall or remind you what I want, what, what I wanted to show you uh, today. So, so our theorem says that uh, in the case if we, if we want to study, um, um, uh, for instance, odds, uh, uh, even uh, a stratum with even uh, co-dimension, then um, we can hear it in some in some cases. We can hear this uh, um, stratum in some cases. So the zero and one spectra together detect the presence of any primary singular strata of co-dimension at most three. And in particular for D less than or equal to three, the zero and one spectra together distinguish singular closed D-dimensional Riemannian orbifolds from Close the dimensional Riemannian uh, orbifolds. Um, so here, uh, I just want to 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 say that so this this theorem indeed says that both we need both to to hear the singularities of um, of uh, of the, the orbifold. And indeed, an open question uh, is still to know whether the zero spectrum is enough to distinguish. Uh, this uh, uh, an orbifold from a Riemannian uh, from a manifold. Oh yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> so before going to to towards the proof, just let me uh, uh, introduce some notations. So here a theta will be the rotation matrix, uh, and where where a theta or, or, uh, it over pi is rational. And a simple rotation of angle theta is just an element of SON conjugate to a matrix of this form. So here, uh, I n minus two is just the, the uh, identity matrix, uh, the n minus two uh, by n minus two identity matrix. 
Um, and the group generated by the simple rotation will act will act only by rotation on a, on a single plane. Okay, so just let me give a, an idea, well, a sketch of the proof. Uh, so by the theorem of Dryden, Gordon, Ringwald, and Webb, the series spectrum detects the presence of primary singular strata of codimensions one and three. So we may assume uh, for now that uh, no such strata appears. So, so, so this is uh, what we need to start with. Uh, now, for now, we only need to assume that there is only one stratum of codimension two and with isotropy uh, order M. <clears throat> so we have only like single, uh, sorry, single, simple rotation of angle theta. Then um, the isotropy of N then is generated by this uh, single rotation. And isomax will consist of all the um, elements in an iso n apart from the identity element. Um, so here theta is a is two pi over m. Now uh, what we need to do is to compare the coefficients of this of the uh, uh, second lowest term in the heat expansion, uh, the heat trace expansion. And, and for the case of zero and one forms, uh, for manifolds with those of an orbifold. So, so we need to, we want to compare how these both uh, 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 terms look like. Um, as, as we have seen before, so I showed that there was a relation between one zero and a one one um, for the case of manifolds. And so for that, in order to compare these ones with, with C to zero and C to one, which are the corresponding coefficients for these powers, uh, we need to compute B zero zero and B zero one uh, because of we have uh, this expression. Yeah, so we, we, we now we will focus on the computation of this part. Um, so <clears throat> again, um, so we, we then we have this expression as, a, as I showed before we have this uh, for, for B0, uh, these this, this coefficients B, uh, we have the sum of all the, over all the elements in isomax. And this, we have to compute this determinant. And this indeed has uh, this, this form. We, we show that this has the form. And with, again, more some kind of simplifications, applying some lemmas, uh, where we were able to show that this expression reduces to, um, well, the, compu the computation of C to zero, which includes the manifold part plus the orbifold part is reduced to this part, to, to this expression. Um, <clears throat> and similarly for B01, again, we have uh, similar computations and, uh, and, and at the end we get uh, this, uh, this result. Um, uh, Now, uh, I, as I mentioned uh, again in the when I showed this table with all the heat invariants, um, we know that there is a, a the a one one term for the manifold is a a one zero term times d minus six. Yeah, so which implies if for the case of a manifold that in this case this the the coefficients our coefficients should be needs to coincide yeah we only would have a manifold so there wouldn't be uh, any any um, any orbifold point uh, so the result follows by in this case we, we show it by show uh, we, we show that we get the result showing that indeed this doesn't happen if we have uh, uh, such a strata in in in, in the orbifold uh, so in this case, C2, uh, C21 is bigger than D minus C times C2, uh, C20. And in this case, so that means that, well, first of all, if we have one, then it doesn't coincide with, if we have one stratum of, uh, of co-dimension two, then we wouldn't have this expression. We don't have this equality, so therefore we don't have a manifold. Uh, but now if we have more than one strata, then all these contributions will be positive. And therefore, again, we don't, we will never have this, this, uh, something like this. So, so the, so the, the result is proof. And well, and obviously that for the case of the 
to show for the three and two um, orbifolds, we, it's a combination of this result plus the result of, uh, of uh, Gordon, Dryden, Webb, and Greenwald. Okay, so, so this is just for the case of, um, um, say, positive results. Um, so now um, we might think about some, um, what happens, for instance, for, um, for other um, uh, for other cases, um, co-dimensions, other co-dimensions, and so on. And and so what we we show is that indeed uh, we we show that it's uh, in some cases these contributions. So the contributions that we computed before to show that in the case of dimension three and dimension two, uh, uh, we can hear the the singularities. In those cases, um, um, we are not going to, this will vanish, yeah? So for instance, if N has isotropy of order two, and if the dimension of D is a, a two times K and P is odd, uh, then, um, so then this, this um, our heat invariant will, will vanish. And similarly for other uh, isotropic group, well, isotropic group two, and uh, and the dimension is two times p and k is odd. Similarly, this will vanish. And if the isotropy group of order we have uh, order three and p equals one, and the dimension is of the orbifold is three times the the the, the um, co dimension of the stratum. Uh, so somehow uh, this kind of led us to think if there were examples of manifolds which were uh, uh, one isospectral to orbifolds. And indeed, we, we, we found examples of that those cases. Um, so, so yeah, so, so this is kind of like a negative result, something that uh, in some cases this will vanish. So this won't give us many things, but at least in the other cases that I, for the theorem, the things work, work okay. Um, and, um, well, and now uh, finally, I just would like to uh, present um, these examples of <clears throat> of orbifolds with different isotropy groups, but with similar uh, with similar spectrum. So, for instance, uh, again, as I said before, um, in here we have um, a, a square. Uh, so the square again can be thought of as a, as an orbifold or some or a manifold with corners. And, and we can construct this square by taking our, our, our two and quotient it out by the action of um, the semi-direct product of C square and the, um, the claim, or claim of uh, group of order four. Yeah, so again, it's C2 cross C2. Uh, so then this will give us, a, so we can construct this uh, square by as this, this, uh, this quotient. And in this case, we have um, <clears throat> singularities which have uh, order um, order four uh, in in the corners, and uh, order two in the in the edges. Yeah. Um, now, uh, in, in this other case, we have again, and, and well, and look that <clears throat> in this case, sorry, we have um, the uh, underlying uh, topological space is just. <clears throat> It's just a, a, a square. It's just a, 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 it's contractible, and but in in this case, in the other case, uh, we have, for instance, something which is a, 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 we can construct this other orbifold by taking now um, R square and quotienting out by the action of set square semi-direct with the group of order uh, four, the final group of order four. And, and in that case, we have this identification. We identify these two parts, these two parts, uh, B and B are identified. So therefore, in this case, uh, they, they um, be just a sphere. Yeah, that, so the underlying topological space is just a sphere. And we, this, in this case, these two con points are, um, that we have three, uh, uh, three points, uh, U, B, and, and U, U, B, and W, and um, and they have um, order four and or and or and order two, so that means that um, in this case this uh, this 
the orders of the con the, the, this this these cone points will won't coincide or the, the dihedral points won't coincide. Uh, so that means that uh, these um, these are not uh, the same. This is not the same. These are not the same orbifolds as orbifolds. However, uh, our result uh, shows that um, in this case, well, we can think of this uh, when we quotient this set square. Well, the the, the group sigma by uh, we quotient set square. What we get is the holonomy group, is the finite group, which, which in this case. Uh, for this will be just C4, and for this will be just the Klein group of order four. And uh, there is a there is a result uh, relating um, the, this kind of constructions. Whenever we have, for instance, if we can find a bijection between the holonomy groups, such that uh, the traces times some constant uh, coincide um, is are equal, then these two orbifolds will be. Uh, one isospectral. And in this case, for instance, as you can see, the, the traces in some cases will be zero. Uh -huh. So the trace for, for these generators will be zero, the trace in here will be zero. But even for, for uh, the other elements in which the trace is non zero, um, the um, traces will be the same. And the other constant that we have to multiply trace is also will be the same. So that means that it will satisfy some uh, proposition that we have and which implies that these uh, two orbifolds are one isospectral. So then with that, I think uh, this is a, uh, the a summary of some of the results. So I think that we have a more or less uh, an idea of positive result and negative results. And also we, uh, I didn't present it, but we have some kind of like a, some obstructions and for higher dimensions, we also have some uh, obstructions for one isospectrality between orbifolds and manifolds. And I think that uh, yeah, this is all what I wanted to say today, and thank you.